know what this stuff is. Next day air. What the hell is this? Oh, the UP. down to the fact that I was to, uh, told by some very important gentlemen, the Mark Connor and, um, and his friend David, uh, with whom he works, who's actually a real graphic artist. I am, um, uh, David Masters is a design master. Oh, interesting. Yeah. It's sort of like my use of extraordinary. I, I sort of prefer that over entrepreneur. Entrepreneur to me is just a whore. Somebody willing to pimp themselves to do whatever. whatever. But when you can actually create images, images so, you know, distinctive as, as, as to where you can actually, you know, smell the water running. I mean, it's a way of thinking outside of the box. And so this is a hats off um, to iMedia studios who has been gracious enough I mean the gentleman is actually Australian from London and so but he spent Mr. I call him <laughs> Sir uh, Mark O'Connor because I'm no Manning from an, uh, from a Fierick and um, from East Rohan and Galway myself but but it is wall from somewhere and we know that but but this design see what this is when you when I see something like this I know exactly what it is um, I worked for a company called Gen Graphics years years ago when we had you know tires for floppy disks. They were, you know, half the size of your arm anyway. 64 kilobytes. We were all excited to listen to it spin in the shaft. But, you know, and so, and then we'd all stand around waiting for an image to be displayed for hours. Same thing like YouTube Today or SoundCloud or Reverb Nation or, you know, the, the, the terrible calamity of, of music in today's world. Um, the calamity that I see is exactly what I saw. And, and um, so I joined and got on the seesaw as fast as I could because I did see opportunity, but where I saw opportunity was in, um, excuse me, actually the sandwich is quite done. I saw opportunity in, um, in the corruption. There's always opportunity in corruption, and you know, it sounds a little bit strange, but if you know how to maneuver yourself, um, through the minutia and the mess, and because it's, it, there's always a mess in a conundrum associated with masters and masterminds of things that are masterful. And so, I measure what a master is as somebody who has taken the time in their lives to become good at something. You, know, you see a lot of people that run around picking up dog food that they knock over and, you know, mopping up the spilt milk when the cow had already run away. Why don't you go get the fucking cow? Worry about the milk later. But Irish people are so pragmatic compared to the stupidity I see people running around in circles. What will we do if there's a power outage? Well, dear God, I don't know. Mary, what do you think? Should we take the 3000 we were saving up for the ballet school for our daughter and build a... I don't know, what do they call those things underground? A, a bunker? You know, just in case it's a nuclear... I heard that in Japan, the nuclear... And... The activity stuff, the nuclear ones, are coming over and is poisoning our water. We better drink iodine directly from the bottle. Go ahead and kill yourselves, a bunch of fucking fools. There is no radioactivity here from Japan, my god. It's not going to have the hummingbirds fall out of the fucking sky. I mean, honestly. You get more cosmic rays going through your system in a second. They could cause more damage just from the freaking galaxy than worried about, you know, one or two clicks from 300 miles. I mean, three, from, like, 13,000 miles away, for fuck's sake. I mean, Austin, Texas, to Tokyo, well, that isn't so far, I guess it's only about, I it was about 5,400, maybe. It's a delightful place, though, Japan is a nice place. Hiroshimase, Hiroshimase, Hiroshimase. Watashi no Shingota Amori deshita. Imisawa. Imisawa wa... Daijou. Daijou. I, um... Namiyaho rengi kyo... Nice people. Yeah, I'm sure I'm saying, I'm sure I'm saying.
So, you know, it's so funny, like in Japanese, it's like, you know, it was, when it starts out in Japanese, you know, well, there's many ways to say thank you, you know, janky is an informal way, and domo, and domo gato, and domo gato gozaimasu, and domo gato gozaimasu, you know, goes on and on. And then, to apologize is really funny, because, you know, instead of just like, you know, a lot of times you bump into somebody, and be like, oh, gumenasai, you know, in other words, oh, sorry, my son, sorry, my son, sorry, my son. You know, and then also, also this way of greeting me, so, oh, sorry, my son, sorry. You know, like apologizing when people are saying hello, when you say hello and say goodbye. Some people like to apologize both ways going. Like, please and thank you in Russian is the same. Pozhalsta and Pozhalsta is the same. Like, so, you know, Pozhalavas, you know, is to greet. And so, I don't know. There's a lot of similarities between languages in regard to graciousness. You know, there's certain things that's fine. Funny to me, like in German, there's no word for thirsty. I mean, you know, um, it's interesting because certain things are more pertinent in other cultures. But you never meet a thirsty German. It's irrelevant to them. They drink all the time. It's a delightful place to visit. Drunk, all, drinking, corn whiskey, well, a couple of bobs at lunch. Even the 65-year-old ladies are booking a half snucker. It's a delightful place here, but they're extremely competent people. Very serious. Until the bottles come out at the end of the fucking day, then that's off. Good luck to you, you know, and um, try to go pee as often as you can because you might get locked out of the bathroom. Somebody's bound to fall asleep in there. Whereas in Poland, they'll fall asleep on your couch and they'll actually pee on it and not bother to get up. And then steal your shoes and your cologne on the way out the door of your penthouse, right in front of your security people. And it's unreal. They'd rather earn, you know, steal ten cents than earn a fucking dollar. And then the poor women in, in the Magellan region of, of Petropavlovsk in the eastern seaboard of Russia, you know, the peninsula that's off the coast of Siberia. You know, it's got Magadan and, um, Magadan's an interesting place where, you know, where Stalin really, um, exacted a whole bunch of hatred against, um, well, I guess it's the same bullshit. They call it Illuminati. I mean, Illuminati is just a version of, uh, of a paranoia that goes, everyone wants to blame an Illuminati. Because you, know, you can't see it and you don't know what it is. I do know what it is. But it's not a scary thing. I mean, for fuck's sake, knowledge is power. And so it must be used appropriately. Inappropriately used, it's being misused, and therefore it needs to be dealt with. And so, abuse of power is what this is about. Part one. Part one it is endemic in business. You never imitate someone else or someone else's tactic. It's called acting. It's one thing to do when you're on stage. But in the stage of life, when people find out that you're actually acting and they realize that you're not telling the truth, you have put yourself in danger. I mean, it's a very, very simple edict of, 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 of the natural human condition, and that is if you violate the tenets of the pack, the pack will eat you. And, so, and that's what the genre of music is all about, eating. And eating well, by the way, actually. Interesting, because, you know, um, I have so much stuff stolen from me on such a, a, a repeated basis that, um, you know, everyone's going to have it. You know, I mean, some people, tornado, what do you take? Well, pretend you're living in a tornado. Or, you know, there's a tornado, but there is a tornado every day. I mean, how many times have you been caught going, Jesus, I wish I had that. You don't even know what it is, but you wish you had it. Fuck is this? A car I owned you. Interesting. I don't even know what that is. People show shit over But so anyways, um, I wanted to um, talk about this colors thing, so I'm gonna shut off. Oh, these are pictures of me in Columbia, South America when I was 11. It was a beautiful place. This is my best friend. It looked pretty good back then. But it's nice to have some things uh, with you when uh, you are actually uh, reconstructing things like Five Elements, Wellness and Beauty. Good luck women as much as you support each other. Ever seeing wellness as a collective. You know, I mean, um, just go ahead and let L'Oreal and um, the men manipulate you in these sales tactics. And spend your $1,600 a week when you're wealthy on the most foolish dreams you've ever seen in your life. When all you have to do is stick with what's natural and it's called eminence and it's fucking delightful. Eminence has 144 fucking different products. And I'll tell you, the, you know, the bamboo firming lotion, you put that fucking shit on, the collagen goes up almost 40% in two weeks. You know, and it's like, but right away, I noticed in a couple of days myself, I haven't had it for a bit since I lost the medical spa, but there's a certain secret, you know, to a few things that solve all of the problems for women that would just make their lives so much easier. Just choose the best of everything and have it available and 
supplied to you from one place. And that place is going to be Krillis. I was in Women's Wellness in order to learn the insides and outs because you now being elected to the National Women Political Caucus um, as the first man in U.S. history to be elected to an old woman's organization. Now see, there's a lot of things about that that are complicated that they didn't understand up front and it's made things a bit complicated for me as well because it mandated that I know what I was talking about. And so being a homosexual since I was 17 years old, I thought, well, is it truly appropriate for me to be representing women even as a homosexual man? I'm a real man, a tough motherfucker, but... And I can't do what is mandated as I see the collective decides. But I had to decide and check to see where the value was within the organization of women. And so, I looked very hard and I looked very deep. And I'm very sorry to say that it's a very sad place to be. I really feel bad for women now. I never really did. I used to think, God, how delightful to be pretty. How delightful to be, you know, so, you know, to be free and, and to express yourself beautifully and with elegance and with class and sometimes eloquence and then, and then, and then the maternity thing. I mean, a woman that's maternal in my mind um, is part of eternity because, you know, without maternity there wouldn't be a future at all. And some women really naturally have it, but they're very, very um, picky about it, I notice. It's like they choose you, and then you have to become solemn to that and fall to its feet. Well, the fact is, is I think that being natural is, is what's important, and then being able to enjoy your maternity, sure, and your fraternity as well. And, you know, and then there has to be some paternal aspects to being maternal and some vice versa, but... You know, I see a conundrum of um, causation, and uh, the conundrum of causation. Oh, the conundrum of causation that I see is a tragedy in um, in um, disposition of greediness, and and then the effect that it's having long term and short term on everything that I see. You know, and but then there's also uh, there is some super egoism. It, it's a different venue. You know, when I was younger, we had bullies, sure, but the bullies today actually think they're powerful. They're, they're sort of a um, you know, they're, they're sort of flying around in spaceships, actually, to tell you the truth. And I mean literally. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, like, they have spaceships in their bedroom because uh, they really do believe that they, you know, I mean, uh, quirkiness, I, I can understand that. And I don't value or judge anything, but when people start emulating um, archangels and, um, and then start um, playing with uh, numbers in strange ways, and then um, misusing, uh, misusing aptitude with dishonesty, and that's a very dangerous thing to do. Misusing aptitude with dishonesty it is a despicable thing to do. And then to speak and use another man's name as him, representing him, not just even acting him, but acting as him and signing off as him, to create trouble and, and, and to create discomfort and delay. Uh, discomfort and delay is damages, um, my dear. Um, and so, because it is, it is such a relentless thing uh, that people seem to think that they have a right to judge anything. And, and, and what I see, it's actually quite opposite, because the ones that judge the least are the ones that have the greatest need. And so the greatest need is not being satisfied by any honesty within the community, for sure. And, um, and now that I've gotten... I guess a bit of a start to a start to where we start. And Krillis is launching. And Krillis is owned by me. And Stephen Collard is lying. That's it. It's all been proven and it's all being proven. And it's all being taken care of. So I'm going to take these boys in a ride of divinity and we will support them. Do you understand me, gentlemen and ladies? Thank you for your attention. Part 1 of Krillis Crumb has concluded. This is Krillis Crumb. Number one from Krillis. Tomorrow is going to be in reference to starting Krillis Kids. Krillis Kids will be a place where children will post and manage their own boards, but it will be supervised and highly regulated. Parents will have to sign their children up. We don't want any chance of anyone being in there that isn't supposed to be in there so the children are safe. 
on their message memo boards. They will ask each other in video and in confidence amongst themselves, through their logins and their social groups, about questions, some private and some personal, where they want a personal response, and a personal private response and public response. And so, the venue is what I need to know, and then what I learned today. And so I think we should do the cutoff for 12 years old, and then we can have a 13 plus module, and we'll call them young adults, I suppose. And um, it'll be highly mediated in, in regard to the fact that um, I think safety of the children is of absolute paramount um, responsibility, not only of the label, but of course of the parents that want to feel safe that the children are in the right place. And then they'll be constantly able to check security violations, rectifications, um, amount of notices per and um, how quickly it, take, it took to resolve it, and how many people actually saw it before it was rectified. Is the system working effectively? What, what, should, what should we do to improve it? And so outside of Krillis, this is a Krillis collective. Everything Krillis is going to be underneath this umbrella because I trademark Krillis. And, and because I'm a commercial fisherman for uh, 12 and a half years. I spent four and a half years of my life at sea in the Bering Sea. And Krill is the basis of the ecosystem in the ocean. It's a small crustacean, very small, but they can number 10 to 30,000 per cubic meter, and the cubic meter is 3 foot by 3 foot by 3 foot by 3 foot. So, uh, roughly, anyways, but, yeah. Anyways, so a lot. But 10 to 30,000 in about this, and about, about this, and about that, yeah, something like that. And so, but the whales go up with the baleen, and they strain them out, and they can eat thousands, they can eat tons, like, I bet they could get, oh, I'd say a good, uh, I bet they could get a whole a, a whole two thousand pounds of grill into their mouth easily. A big mouth. But um, and so um, we'll talk about sperm whales and stuff like that too because it's the only animal that can um, swim down to the bottom of the ocean, even though we can't go there ourselves. It'll go down five six miles seven miles. It goes all the way down to the bottom of the Mariana Trench trench in the Pacific Ocean. I've seen them do it. They go down to fight the big squid. It takes them a long time to get down. And the old grandmother stays up with the cubs because they're coming back and they're starving, but they get ready to go down and fight. Their lungs collapse and their ribcages collapse and their, their entire lymphatic system, I mean, they're sweet. They go from being these big giant whales and then they go down and down and down and dive down and down. Complete darkness. I mean, once you're half, um, I mean, half a mile down, it's Total blackness from there on out. I mean, there's no nothing, no light. It doesn't exist. You, you exist in darkness. You know, it's not like being blind because it's expansive and there's nowhere to touch. Except I guess something that's about to eat you. But, uh, the sperm whales, when they come up, they're down there for a long time, an hour and a half, something. Like that. And they come up and they have big, huge holes in their head. You know, with the discs of the shrimp. But they're huge. The shrimp are like 100 foot, 200 feet long. The biggest things in the world. The Moby Dick ones that take over a whole boat. But the shrimp don't come, I mean, the uh, squid don't come up. I mean, the squid won't, they don't come up to the top, I don't believe. I mean, maybe, you know, I mean, uh, once in a time it's happened. I, I don't believe it because um, the fish don't pelagically really um, like to go asunder and down like that uh, too far, too fast. And most of them are, are made and managed, their, their systems are made and managed to maintain where they're at in their own environment. So you don't just come up from six miles down to the bottom of the ocean to say hello. That's where you live, and that's why you live there. And so it's just like us not being able to go down there. It's the same fucking thing. I mean, people are just, oh, here we go, we're talking. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to be careful because I'm hanging out with them. Um, my niggas, I guess. You know, that's the only way I'm going to say it. Because and so, it's, um, but I'm going to Got a lot of things to do with this girl thing, but look cash money, he's doing good. That's about it. Look at the captain. I don't know. Oh, cash money on the ground. I don't know. Is it German? Is it better for us? Let me check. It's cash money on the ground. This is the animals that are around my life. So, I think I'm going to lay and uh, rest a bit with the dogs and then uh, we'll get right into it. And uh, part two is actually going to be part one 
but this is going to be closed from number two to the phone, but I'm going to hit it hard here. In about half an hour, I have to get a bit of rest. Thanks. Cool as out.